people here are celebrating. They're celebrating their liberation, their freedom to come out of the closet and to be gay people uh, unafraid. Um, they, they hope and they fear, but they are walking out of the closet and in such great numbers that, that they are encouraged with themselves to think that they won't be stuffed back in the closets by anybody else. Before there was gay marriage, before there was freedom to protest for gay rights, before gays were allowed to fight for our country, before the world had as much equality as it does today, there was Harvey Milk. Milk was born in Woodmere, New York in 1930 and later attended the New York State College for Teachers in Albany. Milk was very popular during his young adult years as a sportsman, singer, writer, and political activist. It was this early time in Milk's life when he acknowledged his homosexuality and dipped his feet into the world of social politics. After spending four years in Rhode Island and San Diego for service in the Navy, Milk returned to New York to undertake many unique occupations such as a stock analyst, a Broadway production assistant, and what was most important to Milk, a teacher. Harvey Milk also spent a few years in Dallas, Miami, and Puerto Rico, experiencing many different lifestyles that helped him grow in his experience of gay culture. He got to know people of all backgrounds and neighborhoods as he expanded his knowledge of the world and became more and more active in politics. Being openly gay was not easy in the country during Milk's time. So many religious as well as political leaders around the nation publicized homosexuality as demoralizing. The lifestyle was extremely unacceptable in the eyes of society, which caused countless riots, protests, and legal policies. Federal employees could be fired from their jobs just for being gay, and even military servicemen were discharged for the said to be dishonorable crime. The, the pre-Harvey Milk political world in San Francisco was essentially a time when politically, we as a community were very weak. Violence and discrimination against gays was growing exponentially, but due to brave leaders like Milk, so was the fight against it. 1972, the nation's present-day center of gay culture, San Francisco, became the home of Harvey Milk and his camera store on Castor Street, which eventually expanded into a major social and political hub for the gay community. Milk became very well known in the area and gathered a huge amount of support, enough to have the confidence to run for San Francisco supervisor a year after he moved there. His political campaign was a long shot. He lost the election, but with a strong 17,000 votes, putting him 10th out of the 32 candidates, a great accomplishment for a gay man in the 70s. Milk didn't back down, and in 1974, established the Castor Village Association to encourage LGBT businesses in the Castor area, which Milk estimated to hold around 30,000 gays by this time. Under Milk's organization, the businesses along the Castor Strip grossed an estimated $30 million in 1976, giving Milk a great reputation in the city of San Francisco. Castro was a breakthrough for American society as a gay community that was prospering against all odds. It gained even more fame and success in 1974 when Milk put together the first annual Castor Street Fair, which over the years began to attract more than 250,000 people to San Francisco to support the growing LGBT involvement in the city each October. San Francisco replaced New York City as the LGBT center of the world, with an estimated population of 125,000 gays. However, there had still not been a single gay member in city politics, so they lacked a political voice to fight for equality with. Running for politics back then it was, was unheard of as far as someone being open about their orientation or even today about their gender identity or expression. Harvey Milk lost again in the run for supervisor in 1975, but had established himself as a serious political figure in San Francisco. He became close friends with the mayor, George Moscone, who was a huge supporter to his campaign. Moscone made Milk a city commissioner on the Board of Permit Appeals for San Francisco, giving Milk a greater involvement with the city politicians. He ran again in 1977 with a stronger campaign than ever carried by the assistance from Anne Cronenberg and countless gays and gay supporters that believed in what Milk stood for. In his campaigning, Milk focused on equality for gays and all other minorities and was dedicated to improving the lives of people who were discouraged and suppressed by society. Milk knocked on doors from district to district, getting more and more people on his side. Aside from his sexuality, Milk was definitely the underdog in the campaign, but with a tight competition, 
Milk was elected as the first openly gay politician to take public office in California. He already had full support of Mayor Moscone, Senator Feinstein, and countless other powerful San Francisco legislators, which meant that the LGBT community would finally be taken seriously in politics in San Francisco and beyond. His election was big news around the globe. Gays everywhere saw hope in Milk's accomplishment. His words were broadcasted on TV and written in newspapers. In many of his speeches, he encouraged gays to come out to their communities and emphasized that there wouldn't be change without a large enough voice. Somewhere in Des Moines or San Antonio, there's a young gay person who all of a sudden realizes that she or he is gay, knows that if the parents find out, they'll be tossed out of the house, the classmates would taunt the child, and the Anita Bryans and John Briggs are doing their bit on TV. I know that you cannot live on hope alone, but without it, life is not worth living. And you, and you, and you, you've got to give them hope. Thank you very much. On January 9, 1978, Inauguration Day, Dianne Feinstein, who was an avid supporter of the gay movement, took charge as president of the board, giving Milk an unprecedented influence on the city. However, not everybody liked the idea of gay freedom, and the gay movement was often fought against by conservatives around the nation, such as Anita Bryant, a famous singer and spokeswoman against gay rights. Harvey was not that universally loved figure that he may be portrayed as now. You, I think you know that. He was had lots and lots of enemies. Perhaps one of Milk's most important accomplishments for the gay movement was the defeat of the Briggs Initiative, or Proposition 6, which was promoted by California Senator John Briggs. If the proposition passed, all of the teachers in the state who were homosexual would be fired. He rallied bravely against it, calling upon President Jimmy Carter at the Gay Freedom Parade in 1978 to do something about radical anti-gay protesters like John Briggs and Anita Bryant. In his speech at the event, Milk proclaimed the words, I want to recruit you for the fight to preserve your democracy, from the John Briggs and the Anita Bryants who were trying to constitutionalize bigotry. Milk followed up with more correspondence to President Carter and later President Reagan, who both eventually publicly expressed disapproval for the Briggs Initiative. Milk put up a huge fight against the proposition until it was finally defeated, which is one of the biggest wins for the gay rights movement in history, and directed politics in a route towards equality for gays. Because it wasn't the laws, you know, it doesn't matter if he never passed the law. It was, it was about the redefinition of queer power in the city. While Milk continued to support LGBT equality, he knew that there would always be people against him and his beliefs. Promptly after his election, he even recorded a political will with his hopes for the future of gay rights and a list of people that should replace him in the case of assassination. He received loads of hate mail every day and countless threats. On one occasion, his camera store on Castro Street was even attacked with firecrackers by anti-gay Anita Bryant supporters. And on the night of November 26, 1978, merely a year after Milk's election, Dan White, an ex-supervisor and longtime rival of Milk, fatally shot Harvey Milk and Mayor Moscone in the city hall. Not just Castro Street, and not just San Francisco, but the whole country mourned over the death of the gay savior of their lifetime. Milk's efforts were definitely not forgotten. As time went on after the assassination, Future members of public office, such as Mayor Dianne Feinstein and Harry Britt, kept the gay activism part of San Francisco alive. The Castro Street Fair still brings together hundreds of thousands of LGBT supporters every year. Even U.S. postage stamps and award-winning motion pictures and a California holiday have been made in Milk's honor. But what keeps Milk's passion flowing through America is the progress that the LGBT community has made in politics. He played a role in, as far as inspiring them as well to, to uh, serve, uh, you know, people and be in uh, uh, politics to be uh, servants of people and, and not be and not be judged on their, their their orientation, but to be, you know, a voice for for all walks of life for all people. So I mean, he played a big impact on the way politics is today with with certain politicians. A record number of gays have taken public office and fought for equal human rights, and countless organizations have dedicated their work to making society a better place for gays. As discrimination is being diminished, gay marriages and workforces are flourishing. 
Soon, with the work of Harvey Milk and the millions of supporters he nurtured, the world might just become what he hoped it would.